Hi, this is Corey, and here's a Synchro training video, and the topic of this video is filters. Uh, filters in Synchro are a very powerful tool, and they are continuing to be more powerful. I'm hoping in the future that we can apply multiple filters and have some better organization, but as they stand now, they're a very effective way to limit the information and show just the specific information that you're looking for. Um, so my typical thing that I like to do is make a very detailed schedule and then have filters that break out individual pieces as they are needed. So we find our filters in our navigator. So when you click on filters we'll see that there's a list of all the filters in the project and down below we have properties about the filter that is selected. Right now obviously I don't have anything selected so there's no properties for it. Once I select say my finished tasks It'll scroll down and then have options about that filter. So I'm going to first hit the minus button for 3D filters because we're not dealing with our 3D objects right now. To add a new filter, I click in anywhere up here in the white space and say add task filter. Now I can name this anything. The name is only so you know which box to click on. Uh, the name, this has a two week look ahead, but that could in the options be a four week look ahead. Uh, it's really just so you know what to click on. We control the content of that filter by coming down to the bottom. And it's important to note that this box is checked automatically, and that'll come in hand important here soon. So I scroll down with my anything filter, and I'm going to be filtering tasks by the name of the task that I'm looking for. So let's say, for instance, that I'm looking for all of these concrete pours, um, and only the concrete pours. So what I want to do is filter the tasks by name. And you'll notice that right now my schedule goes away, that I don't have any tasks filtered because I have, I'm applying a filter, I'm looking for a name, and right now there's nothing to search for. So if I click Add, and I do, I type the letters POR. Now, just like that, I have all of the access, or all, all, all of the activities that have pour in the name. I have match case and match word also. So you'll find that this is you know quite handy um, if we're looking for maybe and if we wanted to add layout to that we find everything that has layout. So you can use this to be creative in what you're what you're looking for. And then if you wanted to copy this down, maybe you wanted to call this uh, the the pores filter, you can do is create a copy of that, and maybe this is going to be, heck, I'm not even sure what activities I have in this schedule. Uh, so if I came down, so I have, I want to grab reinforce and reinforcing. So what I can do is call this, I'm going to call this rebar, right? So just a, a quick thing. And I'm going to remove all of these codes, add, and I'm going to say rein4. And if I just go to the C, it's going to grab both this one and place reinforcing at the top. Once I check this box, we'll notice that, yes, indeed, the, all of these activities get filtered out. So oftentimes, that is a helpful way to get your schedule down to a manageable level. There, there are also other filters that you can use. Uh, most common are look-ahead filters that we use. So I'm going to add another one, and I'm going to call this a four-week look-ahead and I'll actually go back and spell this right. There we go. So scroll down and I'm gonna filter by a look ahead duration. So our our blue line is our data date and what I'm going to do is filter ahead by a look ahead date. And you'll see that this was a training schedule. I don't have all the activities linked together right now. So as I put that one in forward in time, it goes away. So I need to be looking ahead 28 days because it's a calendar day duration. 
And what that's going to do is look ahead 28 days from my data date and takes that chunk and anything that's part of that 28-day uh, period looking ahead, it's going to be included. Make sure you have overlapping tasks checked. Otherwise, it will only be activities that start and end within that 28-day block, which is very seldom helpful. The other option we have there is to look ahead from the focus time. Now the focus time, I usually tell people to turn off and put away, but it can be very helpful for taking a chunk look at the schedule. So what this is saying is, look ahead seven days from my focus time. And if I move this focus date along, I can scroll it along at the top of my screen, and what it's doing is just taking a look at each piece in time and taking seven day look ahead from that. So that can be a pretty handy feature, especially when you mix it with the Windows focus time. And you can put in any calendar day duration, or you can scroll ahead here so you can see what's going to be coming up in the schedule at any piece in time. Uh, we can also assign multiple locations. So I can say, given a look ahead of, say, 21 days. <laughs> I'm having issues here with the default durations. I was playing around with that yesterday. So I can do a look ahead for just the upcoming pours. So we'll see that as I move this thing forward in time, it's only going to be looking for these pores. So I can mix and match filters uh, to be uh, quite effective. Um, additionally, if you have c companies assigned to your schedule, for instance, Earthwork, uh, if Concrete, um, you can filter these activities quite quickly. If you want to look at concrete and earthwork, um, all of that's possible. So that's all handled in the filters dialog box, and if you do have questions or comments, please email me or post a comment on the YouTube video. Uh, we're constantly looking for ways to improve the functionality in filters and be able to do more with them. So thank you very much, and good luck out there.